Hey, this is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and today I'm doing some work with Worker Slicer and taking a look at the recommended settings. So let's go ahead and get started. For people that follow my channel, I do a lot of work and videos regarding Worker Slicer. It's my slicer of choice. And I'll be honest, I really love all the features and the care the developers have put together with this piece of software. It has pretty much every function I could ever want. And also has a rapid development cycle so that there's always new features and things to try. Now, recently I've been doing a lot of work, particularly with my Creality K2 Plus, trying to develop a better profile, particularly for ASA. I've started printing functional parts with high temp filaments. And up until maybe two or three weeks ago, I hadn't done any of that. And I was never getting the results I wanted. So I thought I'd start looking around online and seeing what the optimal settings are. Now, what I've discovered pretty quickly is the Orca Slicer Wiki has gone through a bunch of updates, particularly recently. I've opened the Wiki and you can see looking under process settings, you have several things that have started to get filled out and they're adding more information constantly. As of this video, the last edit to this page was two days ago. If I look at quality settings, it's going through a lot of these various process settings and giving more information. And in some cases, giving different suggestions for ideal values. Now, I hadn't been using Wiki to determine ideal values, but as I started looking through things, I realized there's a lot of information here. Now, in order to speed things up, I've created the little spreadsheet of all the various recommendations I was able to find across the Wiki. Now, I'm not saying that these recommendations are captured everything, but I'm trying to capture as much as possible. So if we take a look at layer height, over here on the wiki, it basically suggests a thicker first layer, slightly more forgiving for variations in the bed, meaning if you have a bed that's slightly uneven. But it suggests that the first layer height or the layer height in general should be between 50% to 65% of the nozzle width. So therefore, if we're doing the math, I could look at 60% of a 0.4 nozzle, and that would give me a layer height of 0.24. So what I've started doing is going through work slicer. So if I go over here to layer height, you can see I've changed it to 0.24. So that way it's 60% of my nozzle. Now I have the percentages for line widths, and I did a video on that previously, and I'll link to that above. But you can see here's the rec various recommendations for the line widths. And you can see that depending on what you need, you want to make some changes. Now you can look at the wiki and look more in depth as to what all the various suggestions are. And like I said, there's a lot of information here, a lot of tips that you can pull from. Going over to seams, now I didn't put all the various seam values here, but I did go through and try to identify all the settings they were recommending. And several of these I wasn't using myself. And let's scroll down here, and take a look at seams real quick. So I had the seams aligned is what I had previously been doing. And then there were some suggestions for seam gap between zero and 15%. There was a suggestion of turning on wipe. So I have wipe on loops and wipe before external loop. And particularly for wipe before external loop, that feature would help cut down on stringing and other bulges and whatnot on the outside of your model. So again, pretty cool stuff. Staggered inner seams, again, helps with model strength. And these were features I hadn't been using previously. As far as I can tell, they're not adding a significant amount of time. Down here, there's a suggestion of turning on polyhole. It's a better optimization for holes and circles in your print. 
So I've gone ahead and turned that on. There is in the tips and tricks a note that inner outer inner is a the best wall order for performance. And so I've gone ahead and changed that. Now, one of the weird ones is arc fitting. So let's scroll down and take a look at arc fitting. Arc fitting's right down here under precision. For Marlin printers, if you have arcs enabled, you should go ahead and check this. Now, according to the notes in the wiki, they suggest leaving this setting off in Orca Slicer. Let's just take a quick look at that. So leaving it off if you're using a clipper-based printer. Where is that? Let's find that real quick. Uh, arc fitting. And then there's a note here for clipper machines that's recommended to disable this on clipper-based machines. This is already handled. And the, if it is enabled, it could reduce surface quality. So again, some pretty good information to look at and some helpful stuff. Now, I've also sat here and gone through several of the other settings and added the suggested values. Under walls, the first layer minimum wall, it suggests going with the actual nozzle width. So a 0.4 nozzle means that we'd have 100% on this first layer minimum wall width. So therefore, it'd be 0.4. So let's take a quick look. So if I scroll down here, under wall generation, I'm using the Arachne engine. On the first layer minimum wall width, I set this to 100. And that's just going based off of my nozzle width. So it's saying a minimum wall width would be 0.4 based on the nozzle I'm using. Now you can go through and take a look at all the various settings. There's another one here. And let's go over for strength. Under infill wall overlap, they suggest between 0 and 15%, or I'm sorry, 10 and 15%. So I've gone ahead and changed that. I think I had it at 25 and I've changed it down to 15. So there's some interesting things in these settings that you can take a look through, but I review the wiki and take a look at the various tips and tricks. I've tried to create this spreadsheet, which I'll share to list any of the recommended values I was able to extract. I plan on keeping this up to date and then I'm probably also going to add as tabs down the bottom some other various suggestions from various websites. So that way, if you want to use them, you can find them real quick. I'm also trying to put the references over here to the side so you can take a look. So hopefully you found this helpful. If you have any questions or comments or you have any great sites for pulling default values, let me know and I'll add it to the spreadsheet. Thanks. Have a good day. Bye.